Tito was the biggest boxing talent to ever come from Puerto Rico according to many in the island. And that's saying a lot since Puerto Rico at the moment regarded Wilfredo Gomez as their biggest hero. Tito had captured the imagination of the island and he was the coming of the new king. In my personal opinion, Gomez deserves a solid number one spot for the best ever to come from Puerto Rico, but Tito makes a solid best case to dethrone the king. Trinidad was son of Felix Trinidad Sr., who was also a pro fighter who fought the likes of Salvador Sanchez and Enrique Solis. Like Oscar, his dad had shaped Tito as a fighter and the duo had conquered the welterweight division together. It was evident that the fight was to be a super fight. Trinidad was to represent the challenge that Chavez was supposed to be if it wasn't for his age. Tito was in his prime. He was undefeated. He had real power in both hands. Oscar and Tito could also not be more opposites in many ways. Oscar was the golden boy who boxed and looked good while fighting. Tito was a warrior and hard puncher. Tito was also the one that was embraced by his country. Meanwhile, Oscar was hated by Mexicans for having beat up their national hero and preyed on the downfall of the golden boy. They saw in Tito what they wanted in Oscar. Tito was a country boy who was still humble, did not speak Spanish, and was a warrior before a boxer in the ring. But even with that baggage, Oscar was still supported by the majority of Mexican fans. Because nationalistic rivalries are bigger than any petty feuds that are going on within the community internally. In reality, it was just mental gymnastics by fans to support a man who clearly was proud of his heritage who was not embraced because he did not meet the arbitrary standard of being Mexican enough, a subject that is still alive and well today. Ryan Garcia, for example, faces a similar situation. Because you don't fit the mold of a traditional Mexican fighter, then you aren't worthy of being called Mexican, regardless of ethnicity of your parents or your heritage. And this leaves the fighter in a particular situation, where you're still called Latino by anyone in the States for being brown, but actual Latinos in Mexico and in the States think you're not Latino enough. You can be born in the States and be considered a Mexican fighter. Fernando Vargas and Mikey Garcia are good examples of such. Mexican Americans who are recognized primarily as Mexican fighters, even though they are born and raised stateside. It was not enough for Oscar to be son of Mexican parents of a working class. To have been born in East LA where the population of Latinos makes 95% if not more, of the population. Even speaking Spanish and creating a cancer center in East LA was not enough to be fully accepted by Mexican fans. So Oscar was not Mexican enough for the Mexicans, but also not American enough for the white people. But his skills and drive surpassed social issues and his talent rose to the top. Like Sugar Ray Leonard, he was a bona fide celebrity. He was a red carpet athlete who women would watch fights for. At the weigh-ins, they would go crazy. And just like Sugar Ray versus Tommy the Hitman Hearns, this was a super fight through and through to determine who is the biggest talent outside of the heavyweight division. It was again a storyline boxing fans loved so much. The puncher versus the boxer puncher. The golden boy versus the stoic warrior. The sellout versus one true to his roots. Add on this another layer that would turn this into a cultural event and pass the label of super fight. Just like Oscar had transcended the sport, this fight transcended the fighters. Meanwhile, an ancient rivalry between Mexico and Puerto Rico, as we have previously mentioned on this channel before, you are pressed to find another rivalry as passionate as this one. From Wilfredo Gomez versus Salvador Sanchez, Gomez versus Zarate, Gomez versus Pintor, Chavez versus Camacho, Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Trinidad was now another chapter in that intense rivalry. For Tito, it was all on the line. To Puerto Rican fans, Oscar was the biggest star since Chavez and they wanted revenge from the destruction Chavez had caused in the 90s and 80s. If Tito won, this fight would put him right next to Wilfredo Gomez. The fight would end up being a mixed bag for the golden boy. Oscar would start the fight by completely outclassing the Puerto Rican fighter. For the first six rounds, Oscar looked levels above Trinidad. Oscar was putting on a boxing clinic by sticking and moving. He was throwing combinations and evading punches. It was one of the best six round performances, but 
As the fight went on, Oscar tired out due to the pace that was hard to keep. Trinidad never let up on the pressure on Oscar, and the constant moving away from danger had worn on the golden boy. Oscar, instead of sticking and moving, started just moving. He had beaten Tito so badly in the first six to nine rounds that they thought the fight was in the bag. So the last five rounds, Oscar decided to not continue what made him successful. He committed to what he called the biggest mistake of his life. Instead of closing the show, Oscar decided to cruise till the end, ultimately making the fight anticlimactic. The fight had all the ingredients to become one to be told for the ages, but the later half was far from legend and closer to controversy. The decisions by Oscar and his team would ultimately cost him the fight, at least according to Nevada judges. Oscar had lost in points regardless what he did in the first six rounds. To his critics, Oscar left a lot to be desired. He did not close the fight even though he was clearly the superior fighter that night. Oscar would outland Trinidad in the fight but the judges saw it the other way. Drama surfaced after the fight about meetings between managers, coaches, and referees. But none of that changes the facts that Oscar decided not to fight. In interviews, he often recounts that he and his corner felt that he did enough to win the fight. After the fight, Trinidad would become a legend on par with Wilfredo Gomez in Puerto Rico, and a loss against Puerto Rico did not help make new fans with Mexican ones already disliking him. After losing to Tito, the next super fight for Oscar was against Fernando El Feroz Vargas. But on route to Vargas, the golden boy had lost again, this time to Sugar Shane Mosley. It would later come to light that Mosley had tested positive for EPO prior to the De La Hoya fight. He would be snitched on by none else than the CEO of EPO, Victor Conti. If you want to know more on this scandal, check out our episode on Conti here. Oscar again was on the biggest stage fighting another fighter in his prime. The plot against Vargas was almost a carbon copy to the one against Trinidad, only this time it was Mexico versus Mexico. <laughs> 